Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast. This week's episode is titled, Be Sensitive to Your Team's Environment. I made an allusion to this topic in a prior episode a few weeks ago. The, the title of the previous episode is Business Critical or Personal Desire. And in that episode, I talked about the idea that as you communicate with your team and ask your team to do things, you need to learn how to separate your personal desires from business critical issues and make sure that you're communicating on the proper basis for the issue at hand. And I mentioned that you need also be sensitive to your team's environment when you're communicating with people, setting goals with people, asking people to do things, delegating tasks, those sorts of things. This week, I'd like to explore that idea of being sensitive to your team's environment. And again, this week, the COVID-19 pandemic continues. The U.S. continues to be in predominantly shut down sort of mode where only critical businesses are operating. Many businesses have shut down entirely and a whole bunch of people who typically don't work remotely or work from home suddenly find themselves working from home. And I want to address that issue for a moment and, and say that as a leader, if you want to talk like a leader, if you want to delegate successfully, if you want to ask for commitments from people, if you want to engage your team in decision making and ask them to do things for you and for the team and for business, you need to maintain some sensitivity to the environment in which they work. Some things to consider are what are their technology limitations? What technology do they actually have available to them? How distracting is the environment they're currently in? What other constraints or challenges are they dealing with simultaneously while trying to take care of business issues? What changes are they dealing with in their lives? And I'm not saying that you stop asking people to do things that are business critical. I'm suggesting that you remember that these other factors are also playing on people's minds. And it's fair to say that a person who has been working from home for years is in a different situation than someone who suddenly finds themselves working at home. And even someone who has worked from home for years could find themselves in a different environment than they were in just a few weeks ago because maybe their children used to be at school and now they're at home. Maybe their spouse or roommate or significant other used to be at work during the day while they were at work and now they're in a house full of other people while they're trying to do work. So the situation could be different even for a person who has worked from home for years. So you have to consider things like the workspace they're in. They could have had changes to their workspace or space availability. They could have greater distractions, greater noise. They could have Wi-Fi bandwidth limitations. So many things can suddenly and rapidly change when we're in a situation like we're in right now. So it, it exacerbates or highlights the idea that you have to be sensitive to your team's environment because when you can't see their environment, well, you can't see their environment. You don't really know what situation they're in unless you ask, unless you're sensitive to the fact that they may be facing limitations and constraints that you don't know about. And I don't want to argue that the limitations and constraints absolve people of the responsibility of taking care of their business or job-related responsibilities. I do want to say that from a leadership perspective, we have to be sensitive to how those limitations affect their efficiency, the speed at which they will get results, and those sorts of things. So if you want to talk like a leader, you need to be asking your team members, what kind of constraints or limitations do you face? You need to be present enough to see if there's something you can do from an organizational or personal perspective to help relieve that tension for them. I know that as a leader, you can't fix every barrier they're going to face. You can't wave a wand and make their Wi-Fi be better. You can be sensitive to it, though. You can be aware of the limitation. You can work with them on scheduling flexibility to schedule things maybe after their kids go to bed, if you have that freedom and flexibility. You can work with them to have meetings at a time that is best for them in terms of how what you need done from a work perspective or job perspective intersects with their co-mingled parenting, spousal, 
home ownership responsibilities that are all colliding at the same time in the same space. You can be sensitive to it. You can make allowance for it. You can schedule around it. Those are the kind of things you can do. You can consider if the thing you're asking to be done is reasonable and fair given the limitations under which they are currently working. Is it something that normally would take a day or two days to get done in an office environment where they're relatively free from home distractions? Do you need to adjust that allowance and give them maybe three or four days? I don't know the answer to that question. It's something that you need to evaluate based on your situation. I can't make a prescription that applies to every work environment everywhere. Can encourage you as a leader to be sensitive to these changes that can be happening for your team. It's a spin or a riff on the idea of business critical or personal desire. This is an application of that idea. You have to really consider whether you're asking for something to be done because you want it done by a certain time or whether the business demands that it be done by a certain time. You need to consider if you need to bring more resources to bear to have more people involved in a project to get it done faster because people are operating in an environment where they're less efficient or less effective. Not making excuses for limitations. Making allowance for them, at least in the short term. It's fair to say that the longer things go on, the more you hope people adapt to the new environment and find ways to be more efficient and effective in the environment in which they find themselves working. So eventually, some of the concern probably gets mitigated. In the short term, though, when people are making an adjustment, when things are changing rapidly, when their world has been turned upside down, it's fair to consider what is the environment my team is working in and how does that affect their ability to be efficient and effective? And how can I separate truly business critical things that must be done from personal desire things that I just wish would get done? so that I'm only putting a burden on people as necessary to keep the business functioning so we can all come out of this in a successful and healthful and profitable way when this is all under control. So my encouragement today is to remember to be sensitive to your team's environment. Make allowance for changes in their environment that might negatively affect their efficiency, effectiveness, and results. Be sure that when you ask for them to do things, you're keeping in mind the limitations under which they're operating and that whatever you ask is reasonable and fair given the limitations or given the environment they find themselves working in. If you'll do this, you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.